this is how good a host we are. We show up to somebody's house, and he's the one providing drinks for us. Paul, uh, th- our fucking ho- guest today, Paul Brady. Uh, in Paul the Brady. House. This is your podcast for December 29th, 2018, and we are here today with the Paul Brady. Paul, how you doing? Hey, hello. Yeah, that's a sexy, that's a sexy radio voice. Oh, thank you. I'm not used Whatever, to you're bumping up his low ends. Yeah. You're bumping up his low ends. <laughs> he's, he, low. <laughs> he's a guest. I'm going to make him sound good. <laughs> um, mm. Paul, you are a Kamazenga, correct? Correct. Okay, and you came to Oldenburg when oh to God, start I your European career? My European career in Oldenburg. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, that's where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was it, 1997, I think. Was okay. Jesus Christ. And how old yeah, were you? Yeah, 20 years. You old fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> how old were you when you made the move? Oh, God, what was I? Well, I went to Cologne first. I studied in Cologne for three years. I did a, what they call an Aufbaustudium here. It's, uh, I had my degree in okay. Ireland. Yeah. I was doing my master's, and uh, I said, mm, fuck this. I want to be a singer. So I got my backpack. Yeah. Interrail ticket. Because this, this is really interesting to some of our listeners because a lot of our people are that age where they're making those decisions. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Crazy and decisions. A lot of people are really Ill-advised. scared to make the move <laughs> to Germany. Yeah. It's a, well, it's an adventure. It's the time to do it. I mean, you've got... But here's the deal. So uh, Paul lived the German dream. He lived the German dream. He came over here, studied a little bit, did got... An audition, got the fucking job, and now has made it to this. So we should explain what a Kamazenga is. Yeah. It's an official recognition by the state of somebody's artistic achievements. And that motherfucker sitting right next to me here well. is no, recognized it's, it's, officially by, is it by the state? It's a big like honor. Well, Hudson that's what they say. The, yeah, the Kultur yeah. Uh, Senate. He's a jewel of culture in Germany. This yeah, Irishman. It's, it's like uh, people that get knighted, yeah. you know, in the UK. It's one of these. It's it's a yeah. government thing, right? Like I it, think it's I a just, political thing. I just kept going for so long. They said, "Oh God, we, <laughs> we got to do something." Give something, you know. <laughs> so some background. Uh, mm. uh, Paul was my uh, was my colleague in Oldenburg for four years. He used to change his nappies. He was there. He was. That's he right. My first showed Mike the ropes. Me, and. Uh, he was there a long time before me, and he'll be there a long time after me because he'll he's the fucking here. He'll be there when we're all on the stage. I'm sure I'm going to die on the stage the way I live my life. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a statistic about that. Most opera singers die from a heart attack. Yeah. But, well, I think... Uh, like, a, like, not old age. Actually, very... singing opera is quite tough on the heart. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, a real thing. Me. Did you know that? I did not like know that. Most but it opera singers me die all. from a heart attack. No, I'm certainly going to. Either a heart attack <laughs> or a fucking bullet to the well, face. I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're it's doing like as my, if. Like, if it's in the. It's really in my family. Like, my dad's like, walking around with, I don't know, 18 stents, oh, quadruple Christ. bypasses. He's been through. You don't have any stents, do you? No, you not yet. Have, I, well, if I go to the doctor, they probably... <laughs> They're probably like, well, how are you Jesus alive? Jesus Christ, are you still born? How the fuck are you alive? <laughs> don't ask, don't yeah. tell. Yeah. Well, actually, that's what a, my, my dad, yeah. his name is Paul also. Oh. He actually was on the table getting stented. Okay. And he asked the surgeon if, uh, well, should I get my kids checked? Like, yeah. It runs in the family, obviously. And yeah, we said, ah, I wouldn't do it. Life's for a living, so... It's true. Like I the, thought he was going to offer you like a two for one surgery deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring him in uh, while I have you open. I might as well. I got the room booked all day. <laughs> no, it's true because uh, there's like these tests now where they can like tell you if you're going to have dementia in 40 years. Oh, f- I don't want to know. Fuck, wouldn't want to know I, that. I don't. Uh, not me. No. I get. I may. I would start living drastically differently. I'd be recording everything. I would live my life on a podcast so that I could remember. I could go back and remember it like, eh? yeah, but is that how oh, you yeah, want to yeah, live your yeah, life? That's what I did. I don't know. What I the fuck know. else are you? Gonna, if you know you're going to lose everything, if you're just going to go fucking fuck. crazy later, yeah, what are you going to record? I don't know, dude. You know, you get in the room alone and you just start <laughs> fucking <laughs> spanking your monkey. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Mike's making. You want to record jacket. that? <laughs> Why not, dude? People well, record that shit all God, the time. This is really a Howard Stern kind of <laughs> shit here. We just Where's the Sibian? <laughs> have you not? Have you not heard the? Have you not heard the podcast before? No. God damn it. Dude, then you don't deserve the gift that we have <laughs> oh, for you today. Uh, okay. You don't deserve. Well, let's bust it out. The gift. Paul, you're looking in real good shape, and so I'm hoping this is going to fit you, huh? Yeah, I'm not in good shape. I'm there you go. fucking hungover from the, last night. This is the yeah. guest version of the shirt that Mike's wearing right I there. You get see that? right. That's you, man. That's all for you. Fuck. 
Merry Christmas. Hey, this rocks. Merry Christmas from SDA. Oh, thank you. It's it's stretchy. Let me see what size you think it's I am. It's stretchy, so if you get all It's fat. a medium. That's really kind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to look. I can't do this anymore without Guinness. Uh, all right, so we, we've done on, Guinness on the podcast on before, but... <laughs> I'm going to take my kid off here. Sweet. Okay. Mike's cracking open the beer. Paul's getting half naked. Oh. It's, a, it's a fucking oh, podcast man, now. I need to... Yeah. Give, give me one, man. Jesus Christ, are you a fucking hairy monster. Oh, thank yeah, Mike's you. sneaking yeah. some peaks. Um, hey, can you drink Guinness out of a can or is that no, why you no, have those? No, 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 no. Don't drink Guinness out of the can. It's got a, like a diaphragm inside it. What do you ever call it? <laughs> what? <laughs> like a condom? <laughs> what is it, from, from it makes... It, it's draft Guinness. It's actually really good. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't right. taste like. I that. told you we show, got show us how bottle. it's done. We right. got yelled at by Irish uh, people before. Why? Because I called. Uh, I called it in. Guinness boring. Just pour it all the way in. Okay, but isn't there isn't there a rule about um, only if it's on draft? Well, let, letting it sit or whatever. Yeah, but not well, not with these cans because it's not draft. This is breakfast beer. <laughs> yeah. This is breakfast beer. This is really. I, I don't remember ever drinking at this hour. Are you kidding? Oh, it's not that yeah. early, man. It's, it's not that early at all. It's 1230. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just can't remember it. He I did see. it. He can't remember it anymore. I, I still had a beer in my hand at 2 o'clock this morning. So. Yeah, me too. Beautiful oh, shit. Oh, I had a glue vine in my uh, hand. All right, so cheers. Cheers to you. Here's the Paul. Sláinte. 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 There we go. So returning back to the saga uh, of Paul. Um, so you, you had gotten a degree in Ireland, and then you decided that you... Wanted to study Maynooth Cologne. University, best in the world. Oh my God, what a great time! Yeah, wow, I just love. Is that a party Maynooth. school or what? It, it certainly was at that time. It's really grown. Not now, not after Paul left. <laughs> he took. He they just said, "Well, fuck that. We can't do top that shit." No, no. I was, at that time, I was sort of. I wouldn't say I wasn't conservative, but yeah. uh, I certainly hadn't learned to live my life for myself. You were pacing yourself. Yeah, I was conducting the chamber choir in the university and so oh, it was really amazing choir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, and was that like a bachelor's master's type program you guys were doing? Yeah. And so you got the bachelor's and then you went to Cologne and well, then you I was, snagged the master's. Yeah, sort of I did a year of the master's but I had concentrated on the choir so much I didn't fucking read a book. <laughs> <laughs> and I said uh, and I got a uh, I got a spot and I traveled around all around Germany, I like I got, uh, I, I had heard it's important before you go for an audition. Okay. Maybe that's important information for people who actually want to go and study. Give it up. You really need before you go and audition in a Musik Hochschule. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where well, they've all these great professors, but you really need to have a connection to these people before you actually go and audition. Oh, like, really? A lot of these okay. places they have their master classes. Yeah. Full before. They even do the auditions. And this is still true today. I, You go, you take a lesson. I mean, I know, I know people are doing this. So, I mean, yeah. you, you go, you take a lesson. You need to make okay. contact. You, they need to know who they're going to have in their class. I have the feeling that it sort of works a bit like that. I mean, it's... Uh, That's actually really good for our listeners to know because... Yeah. Don't forget, people. Studying in German nowadays is free. Studying in Germany, if you go to a, sh a school here, you're, you're not paying a fucking cent. If you go <laughs> well, in America, you're in... in the state, they will... Well, I know it from some wonderful young singers, colleagues of mine, who yeah. are fucked. Yeah, because they're singing with, in the with states. Debt oh yeah, before they even come and start fucking working for. And if you think you're going to incredibly small it. amounts of money as singers, you know, you're starting out. You're you get nothing. Although it's better mm -hmm. than when I started out, dude. Yeah. It's gone up every year. Now it's over. I think the uh, Mindestgaja is something like. Twenty one fifty, and when I started, it was sixteen fifty. Is what I was making a month before taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, it was nothing, and now at least it's something. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not going to come out and make oh, sixty grand is, uh, your first gig. Oh God, this is really I'm trying to get. I love so fucking Guinness good. Is my, well, Just get the first one down, and then, well, yeah, then, no, but, uh, <laughs> then you'll be all right. Yeah, I have, like we had Orpheus in the Unterwelt last yeah. night, and it was just after two days off. I said, "Holy shit, I've got two days off." <laughs> so my, my colleague's was birthday, so we really went for it. So is your streak still going? Of what streak? Non non cancellation. Yeah. Oh my God! What is that? So, how many years in a row have you gone without ever canceling a performance? Twenty. Twenty Jesus fucking years, Christ, man. Well, twenty that's, fucking years. That I, mean, I sort of see myself more like a. Uh, I'm not, well, not a pussy singer. That's for sure. Uh, more like a welder. 
<laughs> yeah. And that's also the, you're sort the, of blue, the way I sing sometimes. You're the blue uh, collar of uh, of singers here. Do you're that. just like, fuck it, let's, let me do my job, get out of my way. This is my fucking job. I'm going on that stage. I'm sorry. Downplay it as much as you want, but there are some days where I just physically could not sing. Right. Hey, you I've know? been on the stage where I physically could not sing. <laughs> <And you're> like, <laughs> fuck it, I got a streak. Fuck. It's not going down today. I mean, that's. Yeah. I, but, uh, I, I'm going to do some research. That, that might be a record, man. Would you go but, into uh, Guinness? Would you let Guinness come out and talk to you? Not the, the beer. beer, the book. <laughs> <laughs> Guinness World Record. Yeah, no, you know there's there's plenty of. You think uh, there's people that got I thirty don't years? Know one I don't other know, person who's never canceled a performance. Never. Uh, let me see. What's his name? When I, in, I was doing Peter Grimes, uh, helping out in uh, Munster. Okay. Yeah. In the theater. And there's someone out there with like uh, the twenty-five. And years the one. guy, who I was doubling. Yeah. Or we were both uh, a seeing double the cast, same role. Um, Ned Keen, he oh. he. Uh, don't know, what was his name? Oh my god, I can't remember his name. Terrible with names. And I think it's the first time in his career, and he was about seventy. Jesus, that he had called off. It's like so fifty it fucking years. Well, something. I don't understand is how did you just survive having a kid and not calling off? Because as soon as Jack was born and was going to the Kita and coming home, he was a fucking petri dish. He just came home and was like, hey, what kind of cold would you like today? Yeah, would well, you like the flu virus? Do you want to shit your brains out? I have out? a flu once a year, but it has always tended to be when I'm free. When That's I have, incredible. Or when it just rehearsals. Jesus Christ. So when you studied back in the day, um, <clears throat> were you able to study back English? Back in the day. Jesus back in the day. Well, in hey, the, I'm a, I'm it, is, it is officially back in the day now, dude. Hey, come on. The last <laughs> century might be officially back in the day. I, say I back still in have the day plenty of lead in my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> I would say back in the day for my studies, man. I say back in the Jeez. day when talking to Jack. I, yeah. I'm like, you remember back in the day when, when you, you were two pants? <laughs> you mean yesterday? <laughs> yeah. oh, but did you study in? Did you this study in English? Really good now. Oh. Yeah. Every, every See, I told sip you. gets better. I told you. You just got to work through it. Mm. But back in Cologne, did you study in English or German? Well, it was a an Aufbaustudium, which is uh, so sort you were, of like a post grad. Okay. And. Uh, I had already done all the academic work that was required, so okay. I just had two lessons a week. So then where did you and learn was, your German? Uh, in German or English? Um, um, well, in English, uh, or in German, actually. The first six months was pretty So you, you were learning that on your own then? Well, you know, you get to... I had done a course in, yeah. in the university. Because Paul has course. great German. Paul, One of Paul's roles is Papageno, right? That's like... Well. That's that, that, one of your shit. Well, that, that's, that, one I've that's done something that you do great. I don't know. Well, I don't know how many times I've sung that. Too. Take a guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen you do it like eight times already, but I know you've done it hundreds. I think. Hundred. Yeah. Well, hundred. Um, but that's uh, really, really, yeah. That's a, if you're doing Papageno in Germany, you got to have some good German, and this guy does. Um, well, yeah, it's not a bad idea if you're singing German in Germany. You really need to work on your German. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is okay. true. But some people need help. But did you, but did you manage to to do it on your own, and you just kind of dove in? Oh yeah, I, t I yeah. remember the first time I turned up uh, for rehearsal, and it was I was t it was a Vida Aufnahme, what they call this, like a repeat, like a and there were dialogues in it, and I had a fucking clue what I was talking about. I had <laughs> no idea what it meant. I I hadn't learned it. I was terribly unprofessional. Well, so you were just clue. doing like or syllables. You were I never was, asking syllables through the. I'd whole never thing. done a dialogue in German, yeah. obviously, and uh, well, I'd done a bit in the opera studio in Cologne in the uh, in the uh, Musikhochschule, but um. Uh, it was basically an operetta, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that was already running, mm -hmm. and I jumped in. I couldn't put two words, two sentences together, <laughs> which means really that timing, timing, and nuance in the language is remember, fucking vital. I, I remember <laughs> actually being on a rehearsal stage yeah. uh, at eight in the morning, thinking, "What the fuck am I going to do now? <laughs> I'm a singer. I have to go and fuck. I'm a professional singer." Because I, I, I was basically a cocktail bartender in right. Cologne. I yeah. put myself through college with making cocktails. Wow. Which was really, really cool. Yeah. It's a hard, hard working job, but I enjoy that kind of stuff. Jeez. And, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Oh, great time. I had a great time. That's and why you can do that trick. made more money then than I do now. Of course. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> God, what, like in tips? Yeah. I think you'd be a good bartender, man. <laughs> Well, it was. It was it. fun. We were really working. You need out. to buy Ullenspiegel. That's my that's my dream. <laughs> is to walk in there and 
Ah, oh, well, I sort have of... Have you served me uh, beer? <laughs> I would like to. It's a little bar, you know, around the corner from the theater would be very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah most theaters, for those of you who don't know in Germany, there's like a, a bar near the theater where everyone drinks. And the one in Oldenburg is called... Ullenspiegel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is another place. Karin's Krona. And, and I, we sort oh, of, yeah. I said to Karin, oh, well, when you don't want to do this anymore, just let me know. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Dude, my first piece with you also had a lot of dialogue. <clears throat> we did Pirates of Penzance. Oh, yeah. Pi- uh, Paul was the pirate king. <laughs> Were you doing dialogue in German then? Oh my god, dude! And that was—that's what how that, that was my first piece. That was your trial by fire. That was my trial by fire. <laughs> it was dancing, and it's also yeah. not. I mean, those Gilbert and Sullivan things—they're written for singers, so it's not totally easy to sing yeah, all the time. It was really fun. Oh, it was—it was a blast. We were yeah. dancing. They actually like crazy. made me look like fucking Johnny Depp. I know. Well, I, I know, dude. Really it really was a really good costume. He, still, he was he was still, Jack Sparrow the whole time. Posters around the theater. Oh really? You know. <laughs> and then our major general was maybe the first major general ever to sing Voltan and Derek. the major general in the same <laughs> fucking <laughs> season. <laughs> hey, that's one thing I wouldn't want to have to sing and lose my position in the text. I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. try and well, save yourself from that. I am a very Yeah, except everybody else did all their shit in German, and he's like, "Fuck that! I'm doing it in English." <laughs> Happened right. to one of my colleagues. Yeah. Recently, sort of a patter uh, area in Orpheus, and yeah. uh, he just it just didn't start. It was the tempo was a little bit on the fast side, yeah. So there's no way to get your brain you just start back online. Just and, start oh. dancing, and it was just <laughs> 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 I'm like Ashley Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was just like, <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone wanted I mean, to help, but nobody could. It's too <laughs> fast, <laughs> even if you have a prompter. What are they going to do? No, no Start way. rapping from the wings? You can't uh, do we, that yeah, shit. Yeah, we used to have a prompter, and uh, she was quite famous, because like when, when the actors would lose their spot or something, she'd yeah. stand on the side, oh, all is falsch, all wrong, it's all wrong. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, was, that was her help. <laughs> she stands on the side and says, you suck! You're fucking wrong. It's yeah. fucking wrong. All is falsch. <laughs> Thank you. God, that's uh, good. Man, you guys don't have a prompter anymore. No, nope. saving money. Oh, man. Which, you know, I didn't work with... In America, you weren't used to having a prompter all the yeah, time. It it's kind of a luxury, and I never really... I, I'm not very comfortable using them. No, I, I, anyway. I never needed one. Maybe it'll come. My brain still tends to work on the yeah. stage. But there but, are really good singers that they're like, give me every line. Well, I want every yeah. single line. I was jumping in... Uh, what was I doing? In, uh, in the East. Uh, oh, the yeah. Southeast down in, like... <laughs> What was the name Chemnitz? Of no. Or in China? Magdeburg? Magdeburg. Magdeburg. How did you yeah. fucking do that? There are so many places in the yeah. east. All not not, not that start with Ma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I was uh, lost to give it to us singing Danilo. Okay. And one of the colleagues there, lovely guy, whatever, and he got every single line mm. thrown at him. And if he didn't get the line, didn't move on. He's just like, <laughs> well, <laughs> it was just we were all standing there. <laughs> so the prompter was just there for him the whole night. Like. And when we all had, uh, like, I had to learn all the dialogues. There were different dialogues. Mm. That do, uh, anyway, I've so, never done. I've never done a jump in where you have to learn a lot of dialogues really quickly. That would be fucking hard. Oh my god, that's well. It's amazing how much you can learn in a short space of time. Yeah, sure. Paying. Well, if you speak the. <laughs> <laughs> How how Fuck. quickly do you want me to learn this? Well, if you're an Jesus Einspringer, Christ. if you're jumping in and you you can at least speak the language, they don't care if you like throw a few lines. You know, like if you improvise a bit, I think. Oh yeah. As long as the other person on stage also knows, right? Dude, I so we're doing "Kiss Me, Kate" right now, and it's all in German, and I have a lot of text. Yeah. And uh, the guy I was doing the thing with, and it's it's one of my nightmares is that some German just starts him? fucking. <laughs> Just fucking. You were doing I the miss thing you, dude. With this I guy. fucking miss you. Dude. <laughs> oh. That he, he, my nightmare is to have some German just fucking start improving, and then I have to improv. And yes, my, yeah, well. everybody will recognize how shitty my conjugation is. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, a fear I have lived. I well, exactly. I I have these. Uh, I learned everything I know from the stage from old colleagues who are like Cameron Sanger, uh, Fritz Vito, and uh, oh my god, he was so. He would really fuck you on the stage. Really? What? Why? He would totally. I don't know. It was for him. It was uh, like to challenge on the stage. It's really of, dick. And I learned. Jesus, I that's learned old school. With, though. I learned from him. Yeah. Uh, and always be concentrated. I mean, 
when your language is not right on top of it. Right. Uh, the first couple of years, for example, you you don't know exactly that fear. I remember having it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the guy who sort of challenges the to try to fuck them up. It, it, it keeps things alive. It keeps people on their toes. But you fuck yeah, with people true. you that's fuck true. with people in the pit too. We would do uh <laughs> we would do uh Could you magic rephrase, flute. Rephrase that? I mean, <laughs> 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 oh. we, we would be doing magic flute. And it goes diddly -dee -dee -da -da, and then the flute answers, yeah. and then all of a sudden he would go diddly -dee -dee -da -da, <laughs> and they would have to fucking follow. I remember you would try to off, oftentimes <laughs> jump around on the little flute like do 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 do. No, something. that was uh, that was actually a Mozart's birthday. Da, 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 da. And you played that? Yeah, uh, <laughs> on the wood flute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, keep them on their toes. It's true though; it gets it gets dull, and that's uh, I don't know. I don't have a problem with that. I don't. Having talked about it now, like keep me like. I don't a, have a problem with that. I'm just scared that somebody does it. And there's then a I fucking don't line. Know where to fucking go. I had this experience this summer, and someone did some real Hessian dialect. Hessen's a uh, state in Germany. Hessisch. Yeah, and they got their own dialect. So it's like, I guess for the Americans listening, if someone from Texas did some real like Southern slang, yeah, you know what I mean, you'd be like. What are you saying? Like Ashbeja. <laughs> yeah, like that type, was it Ashenbecher? Yeah. <laughs> it was that. He did one of these. Yeah, and I mean, what are you going to do? So you just go, but he keeps you on your toes. All right. Well, fuck me then. <laughs> well, you're against it. <laughs> no, I'm not against it. People should definitely improv on no, stage. I'm, but I'm, I'm just... saying there's a line. He crossed the line. You can't do dialect to a foreigner. Would right? would uh would uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I Fitz V2 that. was <laughs> he, he was Viennese, right? Didn't uh, they come yeah, from yeah, yeah. So would he true. pull out some Viennese on you or no, something? No, no, no. It was, it was just like uh, if I opened up uh, a score on the stage, whatever, and there was like pictures of, like Playboy pictures on it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, yeah. He tried. He tried, but I, I saw. So he got tried to get you to break. <laughs> he straight up tried to get you to break. Just be engaged. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's engagement. <laughs> sort of like. Fuck something in there and see what he does. Yeah, yeah. Just, just stir the pot a bit. I like How that. I, but I tried, I tried doing that myself sometimes, and I really fucked myself on the stage. I remember it can come back at you. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, like you know, Daniel gags. Mm -hmm. You know, the last show. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, I, I was singing uh, Belcore in uh, Liebestrank in German. Jeez. Lily uh, I, I, you know, uh, da, da. no, it was in Italian. Was it? Uh, I can't remember what language it was in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had, uh, went to the prop department and I got this box and put this. They had this old floppy dildo. <laughs> I was just about to joke it being a dildo, and of course you. Yeah, were, and I this know where thing you're going, was, dude. Like, like it was really disgusting looking. It was. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what color was it? I don't. <laughs> it was Describe green. the dildo for us. And uh, and I surrounded the moldy with, uh, dildo. with beautiful plastic flowers. Yeah, and um, my colleague, she was a wonderful singer, uh, and um, yeah, I was singing the aria tour, and there were all the girls from the choir <laughs> lined up. Uh, it was in a, a supermarket or a shopping mall, and uh, I was giving her the flowers, and she opened up this box, was like, what? and she looked. <laughs> her eyes popped out of her head, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the blocking was whatever the staging was. Uh, she would give the flowers onto the women in the choir, <laughs> and each would have a little uh, allergic reaction. And they keep giving the flowers on, but now they were given the box with the dildo, in. <laughs> <laughs> and their eyes popped out of their heads. So like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and God, I that's, that's gold, and man. I will never forget the look in their eyes. I couldn't sing. <laughs> fuck myself. I couldn't sing my aria anymore. I just laughed to the end of the aria. Hey, you did it yourself, dude. <laughs> I you yeah, had to put a dildo out there. <laughs> you had to totally, do. It. You fucked totally. yourself with a dildo. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nah, fuck it. It's worth it. We we oh, did this Jesus. job because we don't want to bore. How job, many right? dildos do you think that prop department has? I have. I, they got a whole dildo yes, room. They, they <laughs> got That's probably still the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. You have to do a production in one place. Generations of singers. And, oh, oh my man. god! You I, never I, saw. I really, I, and I swear to God, I'll never forget it. You never saw Lydia Steyer's production down in Mainz. Before no, uh, unfortunately, because this. everything she does is amazing. It's she fucking, is, it's oh, fucking amazing, right? Amazing. You know, she just did flute in Salzburg. 
Oh, I, 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 I saw her doing the interview, and I nearly cried when I heard yeah. what she was going to do. It's a beautiful idea. Yeah, great. She is unbelievable. If you guys don't know her, she's an American, um, she's an American director, opera director, who uh, just made her Salzburg debut at Rave Reviews. The, uh, you can look it up on um, the New York Times, reviewed it and everything. It got glowing reviews. It was awesome. Wow. Uh, and I once saw a production Fuck of hers. Reviews. Who cares about reviews? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just interested in what she actually does. She, she's so uh, talented. She, she's great. It, we, she did nothing but fucking big hits with us. Yeah, yeah, just big yeah. fucking hits. Anyway, I saw this one in uh, this thing that she did in Mainz, which actually wasn't the biggest hit because it wasn't the, things like this, these jokes that she would do. There was one point where they, uh, there were two people on stage and they were p- doing this aria and they were getting closer and closer and closer and you saw the one pull up the skirt of the other one and there was this 25-inch veiny dildo <laughs> being slowly <laughs> revealed. Jesus. And I, this was in the second act and I yeah. fucked myself in the, middle, uh, in the intermission. I drank as fast and as much as I could. <laughs> and I was sitting the back there losing my <laughs> shit. I heard gasps all around me, and with every gasp, I was it, it laughing got harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly my kind of thing. And <laughs> yeah, but you could do that shit in Germany, but in the States, you definitely kind of have a dildo on, play, uh, on stage, but also this, this tradition of like fucking around the last show. Yeah. I caught shit for that in the States sometimes. But Germany, that's cool about it. I've, I've been a part so of that. that show, what can they do? Sack you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, no, no. It's, I, I like it. I'm a fan of it. I'm pro, I'm pro dildos. Well, it's not supposed to like <laughs> fall apart. Like, <laughs> I never did that again. Oh, my God. Yeah, the dildo was a risk. Uh, that, that was a bold I don't move. Know. I, uh, I, bold with the green dildo. You see, I always had this. Mold, this, mold dildo. <laughs> uh, this idea of how I should feel on the stage or that I should always go a step too far. Yeah. To see how it works. Yeah, sure. You got to push the to boundaries. Push the boundaries. Mm-hmm. But and the thing is you can't it's it's difficult to do that in the last one because especially if you push them all. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> if, if you, you just fucking, every fucking boundary. You suck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Pick I, your moment. Uh, but if you do that Maybe if, you should be naked with this. Yeah, sure, fuck. I don't care. If you do that only in the last one, though... Nobody asked me to be naked anymore. Oh. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Sorry, fucking yeah, yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got if caught you up do, if, if you do that only in the last one, though, we, and you don't, we had a run of like 60 Salbeflute that we did alone, so you definitely did it over 100 times because we, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. production alone, did 60. Yeah. And you'd be doing it throughout the whole fucking thing. They're bringing thing. it back, but uh, I don't know. How what, that same production? Mm-mm. Oh. No, I don't think so. No. Anyway, it... When you uh, when you wait for the last uh, uh, the last performance to really straight stretch your legs and try to do something, right. then you don't know, then you can't play with the border, and that's the fun part. Yeah, Once you, you step you over it, then you you're like, like, okay, well maybe that was too much, and then you try it again, and it's a little bit more perfected or something. If you wait too long to stretch your legs, then yeah. you're, you're fucked. Uh, well, you got to do it. I sort of do it pretty much in every show now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rugged. Oh my God! Have you? So you said that like in Oldenburg, there's there's not a prompter anymore, right? Nope, not in the opera. So in your like twenty years in the opera business in Germany, have you seen any noticeable changes? Has it been changing for you? Like, is there like an old school way way it was when you first entered versus now? Oh like, God! Uh, well, I mean, is it just a cost yeah. thing? Is it an economic thing? Just cutting costs? Well, no. It, it's sort of you get these waves of, uh, well, it sort of all comes down to being the same kind of shit you do all the time but um uh, each intendant like yeah opera director whatever brings his own style yeah or uh, has different weight okay like uh this uh, the, the person who's running the opera now mm-hmm. is very much a, a singer's kind of a it's more important to him the voices he's got on the stage I than see. the okay the the style of theater yeah yeah uh, and what do you think about other that? guys how do you feel i, I don't want to put you it, we, we, no, i mean we <laughs> what do you think about your current boss <laughs> could oh, you, could you kick his ass he's, 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 a, he's a buddy he's cool uh but he's got singers here it, they're out of the ballpark it's yeah, absolutely yeah. Yeah, like yeah. i'm sitting there saying what the fuck yeah i got like i got a couple of baritone colleagues mm-hmm and like they're the best singers I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, <laughs> and I'm singing with them. It's just it's great privilege. Korean baritones, it's wonderful. Yeah. See, but <laughs> <laughs> Koreans are taking over. Yeah, baby. taking over. No, no fuck no. I I mean I, I'm really really happy about that because there is, a, a lot of racism. 
Really? You put, you feel in, it here? In theater, there are people who just will not allow have Asian singers in the ensemble. But that, I, Fucking ridiculous. I mean, that's a change then. That's something that's changing, right? Uh, yes. Especially, yeah. and uh, uh, we've got the best singers you Oh, my God. At the, and the theater's full. Uh, people are just loving it. It's like, Awesome. Wow. But it's awesome. a testament to you, man, because like you're right. Some intendants come in, they want voices. Some people come in, they want a look. Or some people come yeah, in, they're business Yeah, if you oriented. walk out on the stage, you got the job or you don't. Yeah. Don't really, uh, and, you you know, you get a lot of... What I really... What is not the case here, mm-hmm. at the moment, we've got so many beautiful, different, gorgeous sounding voices. Mm-hmm. You get you get a, a lot of... Like unique voices. Uh, p- uh, people run a theater, so they're yeah. afraid to uh, go for a special kind of a timbre. Mm-hmm. You you're know? right. There's a lot of generic singing these days. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, because they think it's safer, uh, fuck that. You know, yeah, I yeah. want to hear something. But I want to hear. I want to see and feel someone on the stage who's really trying to get into a, absolutely a, a deeper than yeah, ever before yeah, yeah, yeah. into a character. Yeah, totally. You want to feel it deeper is what you want. <laughs> you want it as deep as possible. I got a question for you. Don't how many? Which you haven't tried. How many? <laughs> <laughs> how many? Uh, Intendant uh, 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 Opera director changes. Four. You've you've. Uh, Lived through four of them. <laughs> you want to I say survive? Lived <laughs> I do. No, no, no. Look, this is this is why I want to. This is why I want to. I'm bring only it up. in my mid forties. Yeah, yeah. I'm a young guy. Four, <laughs> no. the, the, dude. People get fired all the time. That's as the problem. Now these years, three that's years. That's a big in your problem. Out. Big problem. You know what I mean? The 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 way that works here. You know, you. Fifteen years is uh, in Germany. After, if you're in a theater for fifteen years, you should be made. Uh, given a tenure, a, a tenure, yeah. you get tenure. You're unfireable. You're uncomfortable. But right. because uh, that's the law, everyone gets sacked in the 13th year. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 13th year. They just get like, around that they're so like, "Fuck w- you. We don't want to." I mean, it would be much more helpful to get the fuck rid of that shit. Yeah. So that theaters don't say, "Oh, well, we don't want older people getting more expensive." So you they think the solution yeah. is to just get rid of the law entirely, and then they they don't have the fear of being locked into somebody. Well, I can't see it going any other way. Uh, okay, that's that's a good point. They're not going that's a to great say, point. "Okay, don't get people get rid of people when they're still useful and right. they've in, uh, invested so much time they have their families it's just cruel yeah because you've heard I've heard of people that are 13 years in it's like yeah, the theater's yeah, like really. we're happy to have you but yeah, we're not off. we're not going to like give you an unlimited yeah there's contract. even it's the only uh, possibility in uh, German law uh, they made it possible for ballet dancers to have a clause they would have to sign another contract that four years would be taken out of that contract okay and if you sign that, basically you have to do 19 years. And I had to do that. So basically, you were 19 before I you? had to go 19. Before. 19 huh. years before you were you got the tenure, basically. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's I got wild. tenure. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care. And now. I remember. I remember um, He's one of the my, last my, ones. He's like, fuck all you younger singers. I, I, I had <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I the interview it. with, 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 uh, with the head of the runner, the boss of the theater. And uh, he said, yeah, every, every opera needs a. A gardener. I said, I <laughs> fuck, I haven't seen gardener. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Every <laughs> opera needs a gardener. <laughs> I have a family oh, to feed. So let's get a couple uh, questions in here uh, about... How, do you have any uh, handle on how many roles you've sing, sung over this year, oh, over these years? No, I have no idea. Mm. It's got to be about over... 90? 90 different mm. roles. Jesus Christ, man. Fucking 90 different yeah, roles. Yeah, some of them are coming around the second, <laughs> third time. Oh, oh. That's great, though. Less work, right? Yeah. I fucking love repeating roles, dude. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's the best. You feel like a goddamn champion. Everybody else is like looking at their music. You're like, I got this. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to nuance it. You know, you're like, uh, you don't have to, like, uh, I ha- I'm, I'm not singing uh, Onyegin now at the moment or anything like that. I'm yeah. singing the like, operetta stuff. And then you do all the, the gigs on the side and you start doing jazz and you start doing that. And it's. And music, I'm seeing loads of musicals, yeah, and yeah. it's really easy and it's really fun. And, I, and it's it's like I think, oh my god, I'm not singing as many opera roles, the big lead roles anymore, because all the other guys are coming, all these new singers coming and singing the shit out of it. And I think, right. happy days. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. I don't have to worry. I just go out and I, I get a number and I make it. I you never it. wake up. You yeah. never wake up going. How's it going today? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll be on the stage what in about half an hour. What the fuck is that? Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, dude, I know exactly what you mean. It's, uh, these musicals, and the thing is, 
All you have to do is like go out and have fun. Well, That's you, right. You go out and have fun, out. or you get this text that you can really fucking dig into. You know, sometimes they, you get some dramatic text where you can just go out and act, and it's like, fuck, this is great stuff. I I like I like the acting. I love the uh, just the acting side of it as well. Well, that's always it's kept me going. Yeah. Know? Also, uh, you know, you get to your mid thirties, your voice starts changing, it gets yeah. heavier or whatever. It Dude, we've had stiffer. this conversation. You know, it's like your balls dropping again, and uh, you <laughs> either I haven't you gone through puberty yet, so I don't vocally. know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um. I yeah. was just looking in the mirror today thinking about how embarrassing it is that I can't grow any kind of beard or mus- mustache yet. I saw, we went to the pool the other day and I saw a 13 year old who had a fuller upper lip beard than I can grow. A 13 year old. That's not difficult. I know women with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Give, give me that other Guinness. I'm, I'm trash. You're, you're driving home, Mike. Oh, driving home. I'm going to have another one. I'm going to have another one. Where are those Christmas. stouts? Uh, I want to try I've one got of those. I've got a whole crate. Guinness in the back. I went shopping yesterday. Spent about a hundred euros on alcohol. I said, oh. a bunch of Irish whiskey and Guinness. Yeah, I yeah. Ne- never do. I never have so Jameson a drink at home. But I said, oh, fuck this. Stock it's up. Be Christmas, dude. Yeah. I only drink at home. Really? Oh, I'm. Uh, y- you know, I can't find the energy to get. If I have free, I can't find the. I can't think to myself. Yeah, if you I, know what? If I, I start do? doing that, I'm fucked. Uh, but, <laughs> but I just think to myself, oh yeah, y- here's what I should do. I should get up, put on clothes. Go somewhere and then spend five times as much on uh, beer that I would. Oh, yeah, I, would I remember spend at you home. bringing your big liter fox. Oh yeah, God, we used to do the fox <laughs> like you cheap fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me get another beer. You want one too, Paul? Oh, That's a yes. Okay. Sure. Something I've always liked about you, Paul, okay. is that you. There's a lot of singers that they uh, they worry a lot about the voice. You know what I mean? Like oh. I cannot drink a beer. That <laughs> your voice is shit, so you don't worry. No, about that's not what I mean. I mean like this guy. Cause, cause Mike and I are that way too. Like we will drink, like we recorded this, uh, this mini opera recently that we put out into the world, right? But we were drinking beer while we were doing it. You know what I mean? Like there's people though that they will not drink a beer the night before they have to sing, even one beer at home. And then I feel like those people. Oh, that's a bottle beer. Oh fuck, that sucks. That's the stout. You want that one? I can get you. No, you get you drink that. that, That's the. You don't like it. No, Where, where's like your crate? Like here, oh, we got, there's, there's, there must be another. There's here, the crates in the. It's okay. I'm, I'm, right. one right here. I'm not walking any more than I fucking. He's gonna give you a warm one. Now these are cold. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so then what's the difference between the bottle and that? I'm driving the car today. These these ones have the little mm-hmm. shit inside that little uh, plasticky thing. Yeah. And that keeps the foam going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I once cut open a can just because I was curious what the fuck was going no, on inside. That. <clears throat> I believe that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's better than the bottle. Beer is uh, it's too bitter. But you know what I mean, Mike? I feel Tell like... Tell us about... Um, mm-hmm. Oh, wait, wait, go ahead. I was just going to say, I we feel should like... Be, we should be actually uh, you know, chasing this with a Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he'd come. We got a real guest here today, <laughs> folks. We got a you get real the first fucking one dead. guest. <laughs> How are we doing on time, Jared? Uh, we're at 40 minutes. We're, right, we're oh, already shit. at 40 fucking minutes. I told you it's no problem, man. It's never a problem. It's never a problem. It's never a problem. What do you want to say? Yeah, and usually I just keep, any time I do a fucking interview, I just keep bullshitting. I just, uh, that's, that, that's this show, man. We, we, can, uh, we just upgraded our lips to the We got three hours. Where did that all come from? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're from Dublin, right? Mm-hmm. So you do the you go to the Guinness factory or No, the... I've never been to the Guinness factory. No, really? No, I probably paid for it at this stage, but Do you um... notice the difference between Guinness <laughs> and uh, Guinness paid. here and Guinness in uh Dublin? Um uh, it depends. You know, I got my favorite pubs in Dublin that I I go to. Yeah. Like the Palace Bar, Kyo's, uh when you know you're going to get the same kind of beer. Right. The they're traditional pubs. Where they don't renovate it every year, so right. <laughs> That's uh, the way I the Guinness taste. So, you you don't get really the same here, but it's improved. It good. really has improved. You know, yeah. the Irish pub I can treat the Guinness. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Fucking nice. <coughs> Fucking nice. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Come on, cheers, Salon Cheers, cheers Salon chip. Oh God, Mike and I do the same tr- Christmas tradition every year, and it's it's just a five day gauntlet of eating and drinking. It's tough, isn't it? By the end, you I got two days off, and I, oh, I'm so excited. Just yeah, to just to fucking bathe in alcohol. Yeah, because we got so many, so many shows. Christmas is a tough time, man, especially if you're fest. Yeah, and you still have 
all the responsibility going on back, you know, people getting presents and right, right, the fucking food. Who? Oh, jeez, I'd rather go to McDonald's. <laughs> It's such a it's pressure. A tough sell. What are we going to eat for Christmas? Yeah. Oh, but oh, man, you. you know the um, uh, my wife's father tonight is making uh, huladen, and he makes them from scratch, I'm and they're coming. so f- <laughs> fucking good. And they said they 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 asked like when do you guys want to record, and I said, well, we could uh, record at like twelve, or we could do it at night. What are you guys eating for dinner tonight? And she said, like, or tomorrow night, and she said we're doing huladen. And I'm like, fuck it. We're not recording that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not missing that shit. Yeah, by the way, that's the sponsor of this Guinness today, right? Oh yeah, we we got sponsored this Guinness from uh from Erika no, Husman. Erika Husman, really? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's where I always buy my meat. You drink oh, yeah? it for free. Where <laughs> <laughs> buy my meat? It's right down the road for you. Did you say buy your meat or be? Uh, and what? <laughs> you go out to the fucking parking lot. Nah! That's where he buries his meat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, Erika. Has a great selection of anything that you might fucking want to fucking uh, for this holidays. <laughs> choose, oh <my> choose, <laughs> choose the green dildo. Yeah, be festive. Okay. So, do you want to do some tips or what? Let's tip it up. So, we've got some theme music. You've got to make little sexy noises over the uh, the theme music I for just the. T- we play a game noises? called Just the Tip. Here it comes. What? Listen. <laughs> Tip love. <laughs> I got like a little chipmunk thing. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> Just the confusion <laughs> on Paul's face <laughs> when Mike's over here orgasming. <laughs> What's totally worth it? All right, Paul. So people, um, people, people write us in, believe it or not, and uh, they send us stories and shit and also questions. And I'm gonna uh, read one of them here, and we're gonna jam on it. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Did you just? Oh, did you want me to do that? I did forgot. Did you just let a ripper go? Yeah, oh, silent oh one. Oh God! Open the window. It's Christmas time, <laughs> dude. We were we were drinking around a campfire last night, and uh, I came in. It's here got that smoky smell to it. I got no. told to put, that's my jacket hanging outside. I got I got told to put my jacket. Outside. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Look at it out there. Blazing <laughs> saddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not bringing that smoky. Oh, uh, that's well. Right. Nobody smokes here, so you yeah, do, but it's you come campfire. in campfire. It's not. It's not Marlboro. Hey, if I if I come in late after being in the, the, in the smokers bar. bar, hey, the whole place smells. It's like no, it's, it's true. I, I I woke myself up in the night last night because of how much my hair and beard smelled like fire. You know? Can you imagine being that's in the fifties and sixties where just. It, nobody could smell the smoke anymore because hey, everything smelled we, like when smoke. When I was a kid, we have in Dublin, we've got double decker buses. And, hey, you had to go upstairs to smoke. Yeah. And we always went upstairs. Uh-huh. You know, these eight year olds <laughs> sitting upstairs, <laughs> passive smoking. Yeah, sure. Couldn't, there was so, everyone was like smoking and you couldn't see out the window. You yeah, yeah. Couldn't look I remember out that the with, the, with the bowling alley. Times are chamber. changing. Yeah, yeah. Times are changing. All right. So, um,. This is. I, I'm gonna read this as fast as I can because I don't. I don't know where the juice is in this. All right. So uh, this message was submitted through our website, where you can remain 100% anonymous, right? Anonymous. Anonymous. So, such a good job on the Thanksgiving video behind the scenes. I think putting stuff like that. Yeah, okay, hold on. Uh, skip through this. I love to talk about voice teachers. I'm still pretty new to voice. Ah, na, 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 na. Okay. Na, 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 Here's the question. Here's the question. So I'm sorry to skip all that. To, to, to the person that wrote in, I read it. I appreciate what you've written, but it's but we're going to the question. I have a final question for you guys. Maybe a future show topic, although maybe too late to get anything done before Christmas. Currently in Canada and the USA as well, the song "Baby It's Cold Outside" is mm. getting major backlash over the lyrics being taken in their literal context and the current times, mm. including hashtag Me Too, etc. Versus what the lyrics were intended to be in the context of the times of the song's origin when a woman couldn't necessarily come out and say that she wanted to stay over with her boyfriend. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, you know the song? Baby, Baby it's, it's cold, cold outside. outside. Yeah. I don't want to go. Or whatever the fuck it is. So do you know about this in the States? They're making a big fuss about this being yeah. like a Me Too thing. Well. And so, I mean. You got important. an opinion? Yeah, well, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Uh, uh, Not about the. I mean, uh, obviously there. About are, this song, you mean? Yeah, about this song. Oh, I don't know. One of my colleagues, uh, we were doing a a gig a week and a half, two weeks ago. Yeah. And she sang it, and and she's beautiful, and she sang it in a very, a very funny and 
charming way, and I didn't think it was anything wrong with See, it. See, I no. yeah, sure. I just feel I just feel there's a certain <clears throat> amount of shooting yourself in the fucking foot. Like this is an important movement. Yeah, this is really good. Like men, men, men who are going and just thinking that they can grab a pussy, like the president of the United States. Oh my god! Uh, the people who do that sorry, should guys. be fucking gone after. I know, dude. We I'm know how sorry. fucking ridiculous he is. We fucking know. Uh, but those guys should be gone after. But yeah. Then when you go after something which actually has a time context, back in those, this uh, writer is absolutely, the person who wrote in is absolutely right. In that time, there was sort of this coy thing that a woman had to play because it was not acceptable for her to be sexually open. Yeah. She wasn't allowed <coughs> to say, yeah, I want to stay over. Yeah. yeah, come on, let's get in bed. That wasn't, up, that wasn't necessarily up to her because women had a different, uh, they were required and unfairly so to have a different standard than men. So this, this song kind of yeah. addresses, oh, hey, I know we both want this. So I, I know we both want to uh, be, be in bed together. Let's yeah. use the fucking, let's mm. use the weather as an excuse. Why not? Well, I mean, and something Mike said, I think on the last podcast, yeah. actually, we talked about how you can't control culture. You know what I mean? Like if people are going to find something offensive, that's not really for you to decide. You know? That's right. Um, and so the thing is, is like, yeah, the origins of the song, I'm pretty sure the husband wrote it for, as a duet for him to perform with his wife. I don't know that. You can research it, but I think I read somewhere once that they would have these Hollywood parties. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I, they would have these Hollywood parties, and to send everybody home, they would like do a song. And so he mm-hmm. wrote the song to let everyone know that the party was done. So the origins of the song are definitely not some sort of weird, dirty thing. Right. But that's kind of irrelevant because there's a lot of things like with old Looney Tune cartoons and shit that at the time were fine and now aren't. You that's know what true. I mean? well, uh, th- th- and so you it, know, if you're looking at some of the old. Yeah. Hollywood films. I mean, they're very. Uh, most of these dramatic kisses were almost like rape scenes. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. He's gonna grab you. Like, like, shut up, and kid. You don't even <laughs> think about you grow up <laughs> looking at this stuff. Saying, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was very passionate. I can't wait till I can grab. A woman. She was saying yeah, yeah, no, sure. but obviously she means yes. Yeah, yeah. that's the f- no. That's and, the that's the fucked up thing. Yeah, yeah. And you now, and now we look at it with a different. Uh, with different glasses and we say oh Jesus Christ I mean, that's the, not okay this one this song in particular it's definitely I. it has made my ears perk before yeah, before sure. this whole thing happened it has made my ears perk before and I thought to myself okay that I, I understand mm-hmm. why people might think that and actually Keen, uh, Keen and Peel right yeah they they did a they did a skit about it where they took it to the next step and yeah, they, yeah. they obviously were saying the same thing mm-hmm. as People were complaining about what what I meant earlier when I said when you're shooting yourself in the foot right. is when the when you go after something like this, mm-hmm. it makes people who are on the edge of these conversations think, well, that's fucking ridiculous. It's like Christopher Hitchens once said, mm-hmm. whenever you uh, whenever hitch. you're talking about the, the abortion issue, the church makes it fucking ridiculous when they say condoms are the same as abortion. Oh, then you have people the on the, in the middle saying, well, that's just fucking ridiculous. And then, and then, then you don't out. do yeah. any good to yourself and your movement. So I think to myself, yeah, but so this is an important movement, but is this the thing that we need to go after right now? Well, it's, it was very... Uh, actually, it was a, after a concert. Uh, it was a carnival concert we were singing, and it was very... It was supposed to be funny. And uh, I was singing uh, a song from Beethoven. What was it called? The Kiss. The the, the can't remember the name. You can't remember shit today, dude. <laughs> yeah. We've had to fill in everything for you. Um, Have another drink. And it was uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all coming back to me. Man. <laughs> and it was a uh, uh, no. Um, God, it was about this guy uh, wanting to kiss this girl, and she oh, said I no. Know blah, that. blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just charming, Beethoven. And I was singing this other uh, song, German song from the 20s or something, and it was like, really? I was thinking, I don't think we can sing this. What what was it? Do you have any uh, uh, background on it? Um, I'm asking the man who can't remember anything today to remember the <laughs> lyrics to something no, he said. I just remember <laughs> somebody years wrote ago. a letter to the theater saying you cannot, about the Beethoven. The Beethoven was okay. <laughs> what, what? That, uh, no, no, you couldn't possibly. Okay. Sing a song like that on the stage again. Okay. What? And oh, this they time. Saw yeah, yeah. And the other song, which I was saying, I don't think I can sing this. They love this. This is like what? a fucking rape scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, this guy breaking in and. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, well, really, it was uh, like. Uh, Man, a 1920s cabaret, uh, not, Berlin uh, was fucking Berlin, crazy. 20s, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what was the name of the song? Oh. Ich bin der. 
Vogelfänger. Ja. <lacht> <lacht> äh, äh, Nachtgespenst. Da, wow. Ich bin der Nachtgespenst. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I I'm gonna break Raper. into your window yeah. and I'm gonna take you. Jesus, and Jesus like, fucking Christ. And if you don't Hashtag. want it, then... Uh, yeah. Hash fucking yeah. tag. Yeah. Really? But this person wrote in about the Beethoven. The Beethoven, like, but that song was okay for them. The other one. Yeah, yeah, actually, they didn't even probably really even listen. <laughs> I, I just said, what? I yeah. mean, the, but the thing is about these types of old songs is because there's two conversations to be had, right? Is that song inappropriate? That's one conversation to have, right? Like, right. like it, was that song written with some sort of ill intent? That's one conversation. But a separate right. conversation is, can you put it on the concert? And the thing is, that's the aspect you can't control. You know what I mean? That's it's right. like stand-up comedians with jokes. Uh, there's yeah, a lot of yeah, like, yeah. like there's a lot of this this stuff in Mozart that's racist as shit, but people kind of don't care about it. But you know, some <laughs> like st- <laughs> oh my god, yes. Well, like yeah. Menastatos or whatever, what? or Otello. You know, there's a lot of like, racist yeah. shit in that. But the thing and is, it's like you will do wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Would- I got to say something about that though. Before you go on, it, we have to talk about uh, Otello and the uh, the racist aspect because Shakespeare knew it was him being black was a vital part of it. It doesn't come out so much in the opera, but yeah. in the play, mm-hmm. there's a whole act beforehand uh, yeah. that uh, that is not addressed where his race is really important. So it's not like they're referring to a black man. It's not like Shakespeare himself was just calling a black man shitty. Yeah. It, as a matter of fact, this uh, Othello is a, is a great example of a black man rising to power because of his fucking raw talent, yeah, right? I, I, yeah, I know, and of course. And the people course. in the show were the ones who were shitty. It was a message. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, I mean, I'm not going to go down that road right now, but then you talk about, like, Domingo doing Follow blackface me. in the 80s. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, that's, okay, like, that's a different... And, like, that was okay until it wasn't, and then we're like, nah, no more of that shit. You know what I mean? And then and it's not really your decision it, it to make. It doesn't matter what color... Domingo has in his face. He's always Domingo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. But Othello, but that's oh, a, but so that's that's I, the interesting I conversation. I know, but that, that's a different podcast. Yeah, but the is. point is, is like, if I was doing a concert in Germany, I would put "Baby, It's Cold Outside" on the concert. If I was doing a concert in downtown New York City, I might not do it because I don't want to deal with the fucking shit. Yeah, but that's you know what I mean. Like, mm, okay, well, like I it's like, do you, do you like so? It's like the song, whether or not the song like is sexist or not, is one conversation. But the should you be doing it? Give it a year, let it cool off. You know, you're I mean? saying like, as I, a matter of practicality. Just though. as a matter of practicality, there's some things I won't do in a concert, not necessarily for the deep moral reason of is it right or wrong, but more of it's not marketable at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that's a different conversation. So there's two conversations we had about that, and people are like, we should be able to play this song. But it's like, you know what? In 2018, 19. Put it on the shelf. Bring it back out. Right. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's but is like that it. song really sexist? That's what. That? That's I, the well, question. Well, I, I mean, I think I, that's a lovely song. I do too. And it's a, it's a like this duet. It's uh, it's like flirting. It's simple flirting. Yeah. I don't yeah, see I mean, anything well, the, really. there's just a line or two that people have, and there's arguments about it, like this, like this whole like what's in this drink line, right? That oh have yeah. A but yeah, but he but you see, no, it no, depends but, on really, the way you sing it or you you you. Yeah, but also the argument the argument is that that was a stock joke from the 30s, right? Mm -hmm. That women would say, "What's in this drink?" and the implication was that you gave me no, that you gave me no alcohol when you should have. Oh, that I'm getting ripped off. So this is something that has changed over time. And now you're saying it's the exact opposite of what people were making. Yeah, so people are making it into people are making it into a a roofy thing. But actually, it was a like there's no alcohol in this drink. What are you doing? I asked for a drink. Interesting. Interesting. So if you if you look at like the way these expressions change over time, there's also that too. Mm -hmm. But you can't explain that to an audience every time you do this. No, but context does matter. You know. But my my vote is that that song is is. From the context of who wrote that song, what its intended purpose was, and like the lyrics, I think it's probably you know, not though, a sexist song. I be- think you guys should sing that song. Yeah, we're, so we yeah Jared and I are doing it. Then you have, then you will know, right? <laughs> it's cool Actually, outside. but Paul Brady, ma- uh, Paul Brady here made a good fucking point. He's like, it depends on how you sing it. If yeah, the yeah. person, if the woman is there singing, "What's in this drink?" and you're in the corner going, "Yes, drink it, <laughs> drink it," <laughs> then maybe you, uh, yes. maybe you. Uh, but baby, yes. it's cool. It's so cool. You could probably sing it in a way where you reversed it, where you made her the, the bad guy, right? Well, that's certainly Not, the way Nobody's I do the it. bad guy now. in that song. <laughs> you can make anybody a bad guy just by the way you say it. I want to be the victim. Do you have another tippy? Or? I mean, we got endless tips. Do, do you, want, you want to do one more? Uh, tippy? Let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. I feel like I should open up that bottle of Jameson. Oh, oh. get it. Go get it. Go get it, Polly. I'll do one shot. Good. It gives you a... Sh- just- you know, it gives you a chance to put your uh, to put your headphones on the right way too, which has been bothering me. Well, with here, help no him with this pop guard, man. Okay. Help him with this pop guard. Jam. 
I mean, can you not? Oh my God. I want to drink Jameson and Guinness with a with a with a real Irish man. It's a once in a lifetime thing. <clears throat> I guess. Say you've dr- you had a drink of Guinness and uh, Jameson without ever having. Look, while he's doing this, Irish I'm gonna I'm gonna do some uh, some advertising here. So Mike and I are gonna be putting a lot of stuff in the secret sponsor section. We got a couple days that we have together here over the holidays. So if you are paying into the the secret sponsor section, then make sure that you uh, check out our stuff. And for those of you that haven't taken this plunge yet, maybe with that extra Christmas money you think about joining, we uh, we upload videos and extra podcasts bi-weekly. All right. There is People some, There is shit? some. by the way. They pay for the extra stuff. The Patreon. We have Patreon uh, uh, sponsors. Go to our website, check out our donate page. And, uh, and by the way, I got to say... You uh, get something for your money. I got to say, people, there are some exciting... Honest to God, exciting things—things things I'm I'm personally excited about coming up in the new year. Yeah, and this so the, we ha- we actually haven't said it at all, but this we're gonna do seasons here, and yeah. so this is our season one ender. Finale. And we'll come back. We're gonna take a couple weeks off, but we're gonna come back mid late January with season two. Uh, we're not gonna talk about it yet, but we got some big stuff planned. And uh, for sponsors, check out our sponsor and section. And sponsors, we'll you guys bit- are you guys are helping making that a reality. So big check out. Time. We're gonna we're gonna in the sponsor section. We're gonna explain a little more exactly what we're spending some of this money on. But check it out. All right, Jameson. It's been like eight hours since I drank. <laughs> oh, Mike's just diving in. Is no, 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 no. I'm smelling. I'm getting the aroma, the bouquet. Are my headphones on? Yeah, that's right. That's Probably? that's the right way. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear everything backwards now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot get my fucking email uh, to work here. Shit. All right, so are we we're, we're not Slancha. shooting. We're, this is sipping whiskey, right? This is sip we're not whiskey. shooting. Yeah, this. sure. I mean, this. you can whatever you. Whatever. You're not driving. Okay, thank you. I only gave Mike a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah I saw that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smell it, and it'll get me fucked up. Mm. I cannot get this shit to work. I don't know. I don't know what it is about Jameson. It oh, just man, works so man. well together. Uh, okay. That doesn't have bite. It, it, it's it's one of That's those really. Smooth. It's like that one of those really good Scotch whiskeys where you don't, where you don't have to. You don't even think about it. And Jameson's yeah, the same way, where you just there's no wince whenever you drink yeah, it. You, you don't know? have to work to enjoy it. That's right. Yeah, That's I like right. this one. I like this one. Everyone's like, oh, I want a Lagavulin. And I want to I want to have torf. I like I, I like Lagavulin. In my mouth. Like, oh, I like I like I, <laughs> I like checked out. I just checked back in. What the fuck are you talking We're about? We're talking about how James how smooth Jameson is, mm. and you don't have any bite to it. You know. Yeah, no bite on. With the a top. lot of those other ones, so you That's why it goes you get rid so of that well bite by putting some water in. You know, like Lagavulin, you're supposed to really drink with water. Well, yeah, people spend a fortune on actually getting the water from the the uh, water th- from the part of the no. world. Where they, yeah, they yeah. spend a lot of money uh, getting water from Scotland for the single malts. Really? You see, now that everybody they say a drop will just open up the the flavor. And so look, it has to be the water of Scotland. Of the, the water area, what they of actually that the distillery Jesus uses. Christ gets oh. hard to speak English. <laughs> you know, I'm looking. So I can't even say the, the quell. <laughs> <laughs> what is the fucking? Quell? Yeah, you guys are dangling like motherfuckers. Yeah, right but, here, right? but imagine he's yeah. been here. He's been here twice as long as we. Yeah, yeah he's doing well. Twice my half, here. half my life at this stage. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The yeah, lobster's total, I'm mm-hmm. uh, Every, yeah, With yeah. everything that people enjoy, there are definitely there are always people out there who take it a step too far. You know, you you, you get a bottle of Lagavulin and then you have to have <laughs> water to water it down from the distillery, from the fucking distillery and yeah. the water source that they use. Well, probably not with Lagavulin, but if you're spending three hundred euros in a bottle of single malt, yeah, you know, some I, of them would spend more money on the water. Yeah. That's, what th- yeah, that's what I mean. It just They're seems like, a little over the top. Take it a bit too far. Just yeah. spread your hobbies out, so you're not you're not <laughs> obsessed about one <laughs> thing. You know, just get get like a, a light online never, porn habit. I or was something. never. Uh, <laughs> 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 the internet. Before. Anyway, is there is there a, such a thing as a light online porn habit? <laughs> Yeah, it's about how many tabs you have open. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Under twenty, you're still light. Yeah. How how long do your auditions I'm last a, before you find the the finisher? Right. <laughs> I'm afraid to these days. Oh, oh, feel this guy's forearms, man. He's he's got, got a strong right forearm. Do you dude. feel that, dude? That's I mean, he claims that that's from from doing housework, but dude, if you're plastering and shit like yeah. that, it's constantly. I, I, know, I, I know. I I I plastered 160 square meters. Jesus twice. God. And uh, my arm's not ready or not used to that kind of abuse. That's hard work, man. Mine yeah. is, but just from jacking it. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm afraid at the moment. I might might hurt myself because there's a lot of power in this underarm at this stage. You take it a break. You gotta go stranger. <laughs> you're gonna <I'm> saving <laughs> it up. You gotta go stranger, dude. Well, you're, you're afraid just go you're, gonna, you're, you're afraid you're gonna pull it off or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got a Hulk on oh, one God, forearm. I got a mushroom now <laughs> instead of a penis. The gumdrop. Oh, the hockey puck. Oh, All right. No. Do you want to do another tip? I got like a million over here. Yeah, give me a good one. Uh, give me right. a good tip. Okay, so this one. You got a juicy one or what? I don't know, man. I just got one. This okay. is from this is from December fourteenth. All right. Again, through the website, anonymous. All right. Anonymous. Okay. I'm in my second year of college, majoring in voice performance, and I was wondering what you guys thought of opera singers with tattoos, less common piercings, mm. body mods, etc. I have wanted tattoos all my life, but I've been avoiding them because of the possible backlash in this career. I've also wanted to get my septum pierced for a long while. Yeah. I was wondering if you guys <laughs> knew if this could potentially affect airflow, resonance, etc. P.S. I seriously love y'all's show. Keep at it. Thank you. Nice. Septum. Well, now we know that, which now year? we know which reason of the year, uh, uh, which uh, part of the country she's from. Y'all, no, yep. people, mm-hmm. everyone's still anonymous. Something. Still anonymous. Is this? Uh, yeah, that's when you get your septum, septum pierced right through here. your fucking nose. I think it does nothing for your sound. It depends what you have hanging on it. Yeah. <laughs> If you got like jingle bells on there, maybe they're gonna ding, buzz ding, a little ding, more. Ding, but do you ding, think ding, if you got ding, a piercing ding. here, it would affect your sound? I don't think so. Well, look, I don't know. Well, I don't know. So, okay, so the septum thing actually gets <clears> into an area where you I are. Got, I gotta look up what this looks like. Yeah. I know. I need to. I could call Andrew. He knows all about that shit. He knows everything about the human that voice. He, this, is a, this is a uh, colleague who was a Helden tenor. Uh, in, is. Still is, is. Still is a Helden tenor here in, uh, in Germany. My dearest, dearest. And where did he friend. teach in the States? Um, New Mexico in Las Cruces. He was professor in uh-huh. Las Cruces. He came back over here. Great guy, great technician, has all, uh, oh all kinds God. of knowledge. Yeah. But those sorts of things, it's like, okay, oh, it's, maybe it it's might. It's just a nose ring, right? Mm. Is that the septum? Really? That, oh, mm. well, that's not going to make a fucking when I when I, Google, oh, I when I thought I Google, it was scrotum. It's, it's oh. this, this. <laughs> you thought it was a scrotum piercing? No, so so to work backwards through your question. You know all about that. I'm sure. I think, uh, I, I, think our, I think our vote here is that that would not affect your sound, right? No, it's Getting not. Here? But that's, that's well, a very visual can, thing can, on a very prominent part out? of your face. If you can take it out, then I don't see any reason for so, it. Septum, or, septum we get out. Yeah, I think some, that's not going to fuck with your sound. People who have that are quite sensitive about it. One of my colleagues in the choir, he's got a... Uh, he's Prince got Albert. One, uh, uh, he won't take it out. He won't take it out. No, you yeah. have people who wear glasses. They won't take their glasses In the off. chorus, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the chorus has a little bit more leeway in Germany. In, well, in in Amer- or in America or here, they they want the, they these want are things I don't understand. I mean, you're going to go on the stage, you take it seriously, or you don't. So you're you know? saying if you're if you're going to take it seriously, if you're, you're going to take it out. Concept, you don't need it. You right. Don't, well, okay. Well, what's this? Like? I mean, so like the conversation about it affecting <clears throat> your sound, I would say it doesn't affect your sound. No, so now, I can't imagine. So now the conversation is tattoos. if you're if you got tattoos, if you got body yeah, piercing tattoos mods, tattoos always look cool on the stage. Mm-hmm. Actually, I got two tattoos. It doesn't affect me at all. Mike's got two on his arms. Yeah, the thing is, is of course. But mine aren't visible. Mine aren't like sleeves. Yeah, we're Welcome not talking to about Frankfurt. that. Have no. a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the reality though is, I think Dortmund. <laughs> the arrow pointing down. You, so, be, you have to be fully. That's bad. That's a bad joke. If people, no, it's not a joke. It's a. It's a fucking uh, really popular T-shirt. I've wanted one forever. So Dortmund that, that is, is a joke. Obviously, I was like talking the, about the tattoo on your penis. No, oh. with an arrow. Dort. You down have to be Mont. like fully. <laughs> Throw Man, we're, we're just plunging this podcast into bullshit. Yeah, you guys wanted me on the show. The Every time the whiskey comes out, th- these podcasts become hey, unusable. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. So tattoos are definitely a different thing than something like a piercing, which is much smaller. If, you, it, like, if you're one of these people who's got having like face tattoos, yeah, might be a little bit more problematic. If you have like full sleeves and everything, yeah. that also <clears throat> might be a little problematic because then if the character doesn't, is not supposed to have a big tattoo. They got to put the body stuff on there, but that's the point. They can put body makeup on there, and then that's it. Yeah, but okay. So I mean, first off, tattoos and piercings are not going to help your career. You know what I mean? It's not going to make you more marketable. That's right. So of course you're risking like uh, well, a dip in marketability. I mean, to the right people, maybe. Uh, yeah. But but for the for the most part, you got to balance. Like it's like a work life balance thing. You yeah, know, well. you cannot give your life completely to being an opera singer. You like deny yourself things that you want. You know what I mean? Like one hundred percent. If tattoos are very important to you, uh, you yeah, should be able to have fucking it. Do it. Yeah, yeah just d- fucking do yeah, it. Yeah, get the tattoo, and you're gonna have to show up to makeup an hour earlier than everyone else. Because I had a buddy back in New York. He had a full sleeve. Yeah. Right. And so we would do shows together. We did Boem, and it's like, yeah, he had to, like he had to leave 
lunch and go two hours earlier than everyone to get makeup put all over his fucking arm and he couldn't touch his white shirt. You know what I mean? Mm. But also, whatever. He, he wanted to sleep. Let's put this out here. Yeah, well, it matters this, what... What? Go ahead. You have the, uh, there is the other case where you will lose your job if you have a fucking that's, swastika that's on exactly, your That's exactly what I was just about to bring up. Okay. So it matters is, what okay. you're getting tattooed. Yeah, of course. The, of there was course. a guy in Bayreuth, right? Which we talked about last week. Wagner's the holy mecca of, uh, Bay, uh, of Bayreuth for Wagnerians, right? Right. He was about to make his premiere as uh, Flying Dutchman, right? Oh, yeah. Fliegen Hollander. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have the swastika anymore, right? But old photos appeared where the tattoo he had... Oh, so he didn't have the tattoo. It was like... No, no, no. He had it earlier and then had it altered, but uh, the pictures showed up where okay. there's a big fucking swastika on his uh, chest. So if he were writing in and saying... Should I tattoo a swastika on my chest? I think I might say fuck it, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, especially it, I mean, they have, they have to be careful there, you know. Of course, they got to be careful. <laughs> so there's a line. I think I think in today's and opera Nazis world, are though, fucking oh, Jesus, fucking assholes. Yeah. I think in today's opera world, though, if you have a tattoo on your leg, on your shoulder, if you have a nose piercing, an eyebrow piercing, I think it's fucking fine. I think nobody cares if you're talking about face tattoos, full sleeves, like then you got to start extreme, questioning. like nine fucking piercings in your eyebrow, something that like it draws the eye so much that you can be nothing else but that fucking guy. That's right. Because as an actor, or, you have to be you have to be flexible. That's right. right. You're a king. You're a yeah. father. You're poor. Yeah. You're rich. But the more you you chisel yourself into a niche. Then mm-hmm. yeah, the less flexible you are. On a much on a much smaller scale. Yeah. Unless uh, you market yourself in that direction. Yeah, but right. Then, like I'm that guy, but that, that's a niche market. A bit like Nigel Kennedy sort of doing the punk thing with the violin, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's There's true. a niche for that, but it's like the the more money is probably made by diversifying your investments. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you can be lyric, if you can be dramatic, if you can be if you can be rich, poor, young, old, then of course you're going to increase the amount of work. Here's you need, the thing, right? though. Here's the thing, though, uh, and I. I've always harped on how important it is to try to be an artist every time you're on stage, right? It's it's It matters what you're saying, that you're getting up there and fucking trying to say something. That right? will always sound the loudest. Yeah. And uh, if, that, if, if you are up there and every character, every character you do is one of these, has this pierced character look, yeah. it's somehow a little less effective, I got to say. Yeah. Because your versatility is gone just a little bit. Well, you're sort of making it difficult for the people working with your exactly, look exactly to yeah, yeah, yeah. make choices. But I mean, uh, that's much w- less, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sorry, may, may I, I want to get to the end of this? Uh, uh, much less is also having glasses. You know, I can't, I can't hold, I can't do contacts very well. I've got something fucked up with my eyes where I can do contacts, but not very often. So sometimes I have to wear Peg- glasses on Peggy stage. Four eyes, yeah, <laughs> fucking four eye pegger, <laughs> fucking nerd, and. But that's, I've always hated it because then the characters always then have glasses. And I'm like, fuck that. I don't want that. Yeah. This character shouldn't have glasses. So I, I have see, gone I blind see. on, okay. I've, gone, I've gone without contacts and glasses <laughs> on stage. My problem is I keep for- forgetting my fucking contact lenses. Yeah. yeah and then <laughs> and you gotta go blind. A couple of colleagues say, hey, you got contacts? <laughs> 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 No, but I think we're talking about the extreme end of it. But I think in today's world, if you want a basic tattoo, basic piercings, I say fucking go for it. Look, just get an ass cheek piercing. No one's going to see that most of the time on stage. Unless yeah, you come well, to people, Germany. People get <laughs> tattoos because they want it to be seen. But yeah, what, what the fuck well, are body mods? It starts mods? to hang after a while, though. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you get this big claw coming out of <laughs> instead of this butterfly wing. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what, what are body mods? She said body mods. Yeah, that's... Or they. Modifications? Uh, yeah, but what is that? Is that like is that like when you like look scarring, like a tiger, scarring or stuff like? Yeah, that, people that get like sometimes uh, little horns and shit. Like the horns, horns and shit. Yeah, the horns are probably gonna gonna be a career burner. Don't unless don't, you are gonna be exclusively Mephisto for the rest yeah. of your life. Yeah, don't then, do then, the horns. then you're gonna dominate that role. You know, in that case, <laughs> Mephisto. Body, body mods. Yeah, see, when I type in body Mephista. mods, I get I get like fucking lizard man here. If, yeah, that's different. <laughs> if this is you, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, well that oh, look, the Jesus one we're looking Christ. at right now with the split I'm tongue. Sorry, that's with the split tongue, oh, I would n- oh, obviously not not fucking. Uh, how, does he, how does he sing an L? <laughs> <laughs> he's it got his tongue split L. down the middle. Everything is Stella because he's fucking. It's love, double L every time. I, I love you. But we we talk, cannot do the inner vocalic. Flip of the tongue L because it's always double. He's doing no flip dart. <laughs> I don't know if he's if he's doing fellatio. How do, where does he have to turn to the he's, left? His tongue, <laughs> his tongue is wrapping around the shaft. Jeez. 
Give me I the, don't know. Sorry, give I me think the about these things. <laughs> every time I like yours, though. Every time he tries to flip it, R is just. <laughs> <laughs> he can't control the tip. Oh, Man, that's interesting. No, I tell you though, like uh, Mike and I talk about this on the show. Like, if you want to make art, you can fucking do that in your basement. You don't need an opera house, right. you know. And in today's world of YouTube and all this shit, like, if you want to just be an artist, then tattoos and shit are not going to stop you from that. But if you want to have a wide marketability with different houses in different countries and things then yeah you want to be unique you don't want to be bland but there's there's a gray area sure that, that's obvious are you looking at this as a business or are you looking at this as an artist like as an artist tattoos are not going to get in the way but like you guys said it could if you become too niche then you're not going to have range if you just go like like you said every character has glasses yeah, that I, and, yeah. I, and uh, I, that's why I'm going to get LASIK sometime because I want to. I want to be able to. Does just the gangster not have around glasses around and kiss me, Kate? No, they they said, okay, well, you want you're going to have your glasses. I said, no, I'm not. Yeah. They said this this gangster will not fucking have glasses. He does not have glasses. Period. Pierce, I, I take out, but but uh, tattoos, man, you can't take off. They didn't want him to have glasses. They looked at me and uh, I uh, with the other character that I did yeah. uh, with this uh, regie team, the um, the director. Uh, it was one where I thought, well, okay, the co- character could have glasses. That makes sense to me, you know? And then I just used my glasses, and they kind of assumed, okay, well, he mm-hmm. doesn't want to get rid of his glasses. Yeah. Does he want to have them here? I said, fuck that, no. He's a gangster, for God's sake. Yeah, well, that's the problem in, a, in a, the procedure. Like in the uh, re- uh, rehearsal time, you're putting the things, putting everything. Oh, fuck me, James. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you get. I've had it so many times. The, the team comes with a concept, mm-hmm. with a with a uh, the way they want to put the piece together, and you end up keeping everything you had in the rehearsal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, procedure. Which is why it's like all, even the props, even the shitty looking sh- yeah, No, I yeah, think yeah, it it's... works like that because <laughs> cause and then they bring all this new stuff in and it looks like shit. You know? And no, you I, must know this, dude. Yeah. That's why it's so da- fucking dangerous to make jokes during rehearsal. Because then like, the keep jokes it. stay Jesus in. Christ. <laughs> oh my god. I've had entire roles comprised of just the jokes I was fucking around with. You know, you, if you grow up in Dublin in the choral, you know, uh, scene, scene and, yeah. yeah. And you've done every oratorio with very little original text. You know what I mean? Oh, we shag sheep. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of, it, it sort of becomes, it's sort of the way I work too. And I mean, I built so much bullshit in just to keep myself. Uh, you got to have fun uh, in have this fun. world, people. The most important right, right. thing in the world for me is having fun. Absolutely. In Absolutely, yeah, yeah. dude. And, uh, and I think that's important for my colleagues too. They... Uh, my co- you come in and you you're in, under pressure, especially young singers these days. Oh, what a horrible situation to like! I got to fucking nail it. Oh it's got to be perfect. God, yeah. And it's it's very important for uh, them then, that uh, Paul Brady has fun during rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paul, no, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! How many times did you hit <laughs> on stage? We'll be standing on stage, and he does his little fart. Do it again. Well, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you know, you got to challenge people. You say. Uh, did he just do that? No. No. <laughs> Can't prove it. No, but the energy, man, you can spread you can spread it to everybody. I, I've had shows where one person can make can make a whole show a better experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can also have these perfectionist people that, that freak the fuck out. And they'll know. ruin the experience. They'll ruin the whole goddamn oh, show. Oh my god. You got you just got well, I mean <laughs> the theater's full of every kind of person you're you're ever gonna meet. We're very privileged oh, yeah. to have such a wonderful uh, career job, whatever. Yeah. It, yeah. Mostly Lifestyle. people who are driven by passion and music and mostly very intelligent people who have gone to so many lengths to actually... Get him a, some more Jameson, please. To have the desire to uh, express or to, to share yeah. Yeah, yeah, emotion yeah. Uh, through music. and Oh, my God. So, oh yeah, yeah you, you, well, you don't want to forget that that's, that's, like, that's the foundation of everything, of all art. You know what I mean? YOLO, and dude. YOLO. Y- y- Mike's going <laughs> Mike's to piss. I've been saying YOLO too much lately. But, <laughs> but no, seriously, because people come in and they, they, they make it a career thing. They make it a climb thing. They make it a, like, I got to nail this to get the next job thing. And uh, you're going you're gonna to shoot yourself you, in the yeah, foot well, with that's, that. That's, that's, that's a hard way to live. Getting back to like, mm-hmm. servicing this generic kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Which it, to to f- fulfill other people's okay. Desires. So right, are you are let's you bring are it you, back if, around if, to the co- uh, to this thing? 
Don't fill other people's thing. Fill your desire. And if your desire is to get, if you want that tattoo, fucking get the yeah, tattoo on, and make art with tattoo. Honesty will Period. always read more than anything else. Uh, authenticity and honesty. And if you're authentic and if you're honest, then that is going to sell more than a perfectly vibrant Definitely. fucking well, whatever and, you voice. You know, it's, it's the most important thing for me has been uh, watching colleagues. And what yeah. really speaks to me is if I see somebody uh, ex- making a, a real experience, yeah. having a, an experience, mm-hmm. uh, sharing something with me. There's so many incredible musicians. They're like machines there. Uh, and you think, oh my God, how do they do that? It's perfect. But it they doesn't d- touch me. They don't me. touch An right? artist and is having something that doesn't interest it's, me. It's really, for me, <clears throat> what I look for in myself. And I think, I think that's what I can do. Yeah. That's, that's why I, I'm still allowed to sing. Or yeah. I think it's completely true. I mean, being an artist is not being a technician. It's not having a perfect technique, but it's having something to say. You know, and it, it makes me want to yeah. take back the advice that we gave to, to this uh, to this uh, girl, right? It makes me want to take it back because we gave very practical advice. Mm-hmm. Very, if you, uh, let's, what do the people who are going to engage you want to do? Fuck that. You're the artist. If you want to do, or if you want to create art, you create art exactly the way that you want to fucking create it. If you feel in your heart that this is how you want to present yourself, yeah. present yourself that way, create art that way, and fuck people who don't like it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the other exactly. side of it. What? Why? why yeah. What's the point otherwise? What's the point? What's the point otherwise? And, exactly. And the truth uh, is, uh, Paul Brady. It that's that's why we have you on these podcasts. <laughs> Thank you. God damn no, it. but they. Uh, she says she's a second year in her in her college degree. I think in like some sort of thing. The thing is too, if you walk into an audition, second year. Oh, great year. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody year. knows each other. <laughs> but if you if you walk <laughs> in, barriers are broken. <laughs> no, I didn't have. No, I didn't. No. Well, okay, it was one drunken night. Okay, <laughs> baby, it's cold <laughs> outside. <laughs> But I would say if you walk into an audition trying to please them, that that never it's never a good strategy. You know what I mean? So you say something. It's yeah. hard. said it's, it a million it's, times. It's difficult not to. Yeah, because but but but, but beyond track. tattoos, like if you're wearing a suit or a dress or you you don't you hate heels and you're wearing heels, they're gonna smell that. They're gonna smell that you're being somebody you're not. Yeah. So you gotta go in there and you gotta. Yeah, feel I turned up for my uh, audition in the Hochschule in Cologne. Yeah. <laughs> fucking t-shirt and jeans no I wouldn't do it now <laughs> but I had no idea what the fuck well, I was dude, doing dude that's yeah, acceptable yeah. in Germany I've seen people go t-shirt jeans and then they just throw on a jacket it's crazy it's true I've it, seen it, people at big opera houses do no, that I didn't shit. have a jacket I just my fucking t-shirt <laughs> yeah, nobody does that <laughs> I'm going and, with and I, if you I, had I, this t-shirt it'd be fine I'm going with jingle bells yeah. on my nipples next time yeah. hey I'm creating art and fuck people who don't like it <laughs> alright nice. so is that it yeah. I think that's, that's it baby okay so, uh, Paul baby, Brady, thank you, outside. Paul thank Brady. you. That was that was awesome. That's Thanks, exactly guys. what we what we want from our Irish colleagues to bring. Yeah, Paul exactly. Jameson. So we'll be taking a little winter break here till uh, oh, God, mid I'm late January. This burp. <laughs> Let it out. Uh, oh, Let it God. out. Sorry. Um. All right. That's it. So uh, happy whatever the fuck you do for the end of your year. Right. Happy holidays, fuckers. And, and uh, uh, we'll see you in the new year. You, happy holidays. Oh, I, I want to say. Do you have a website or anything no, that we can send no, people to? No, fuck that. Uh, well, check out our website at least. We'll get a picture of Paul up at least. You can. Yeah. <laughs> I have tenure. I don't need to fucking do anything. <laughs> See you, people. See ya. <laughs>